the immediate center of attention inside the 1960 Chrysler is the strikingly different Astrodome instrument cluster. Well, Chrysler certainly had a number of interesting and crazy interiors, including instrument panels in the early 1960s to complement the overly wacky exteriors as Virgil Exner's tenure at the head of design came to a close. We've previously talked about the 1961 to 63 Imperial, complete with its square steering wheel flanked by rather strange tail fin looking like pods that housed the torque flight transmission buttons, as well as the HVAC buttons and the left and right turn signals. And while I would certainly call the 61 to 63 Imperial Dash wonky, I think this other dash in interior on another Chrysler vehicle from the same time frame isn't necessarily wonky, but it is extremely classy and beautiful. And that is the 1960 to 62 Chrysler Astrodome instrument panel. This instrument panel offered only on Chrysler products, as mentioned from the 1960 to 62 model years, has to be one of the most futuristic, interesting, as well as beautiful instrument panels ever made in the history of the American automobile. Chrysler's own literature from 1960 touted the new interior styling, saying that the 1960 Chrysler interior styling is driver-centered. A new instrument panel with panelescent lighting and Astrodome instrument cluster bring important instruments closer to the driver, making them easier to read. And whether you got a Windsor, Saratoga, or New Yorker in 1960, or by the 1962 model year where the lineup had changed to the Newport 300 and New Yorker, this Astrodome instrument cluster really set Chrysler's apart on the interior from every other make, including other vehicles in its own lineup. The Astrodome began as an improvement of an instrument panel that was used on Chrysler cars from a few years earlier, from 1949 to 1954, but it had a far more dramatic and three-dimensional appearance. And even after the Astrodome's life in 1962, Chrysler reinstated an approach similar to this on 1965 and 1966 cars that had a semicircle speedometer with gauges included in it, but it wasn't the same three-dimensional shape. The Astrodome was really the pinnacle of styling from a Chrysler instrument panel standpoint. Within the Astrodome's plastic bubble were four gauges as well as the speedometer, including amps, fuel, engine temperature, as well as oil pressure. And located in the nacelle surrounding the bottom of the Astrodome cluster were four round knobs that controlled various functions, including the rear window defroster, the map light, the dome light, as well as the power antenna. Outside the direct Astrodome, there were also some interesting controls in these vehicles, as shown by this interior photo of a 1960 New Yorker. To the left of the Astrodome, you see the push buttons for Chrysler's Torque Flight automatic transmission, and in these years, there was no park setting. The driver had to push the neutral button and then engage the emergency brake. Directly below this row of push buttons is the turn signal switch, which is not located on the steering column because there's not really a place for it with the three-dimensional Astrodome. So the turn signal is this lever that juts out from the dashboard, and you push it left for the left turn signal, and you push it right for the right turn signal. It kind of returns to center on its own. This was not the first time Chrysler had put the turn signal in a somewhat awkward location off of the steering column. This also occurred in the late 1950s Imperials that had the turn signal off of the column and on the lower portion of this kind of inverted horseshoe-shaped hood that covered the instrument cluster. You can see it here below the row of buttons to activate the torque flight automatic transmission. And beyond the beauty of the design, which could be seen in the daytime, Chrysler thankfully endowed the Astrodome with some great nighttime lighting, including this blue-green style light that just illuminated and radiated from the overall Astrodome cluster. The nighttime effect was further magnified by the steering wheel, which had translucent sections that would reflect the light in the nighttime, creating an even greater ambiance in the cabin. Overall, the Astrodome was just a wonderful complement to the high level of style that these last Virgil Exner era cars exemplified. 
The unfortunate part about them, though, is that they were perhaps a bit too over the top because they didn't sell well, particularly the 300 models. In 1960, for instance, the lowest end Chrysler, the Windsor, sold under 40,000 units. The Saratoga sold under 15,000 units, and the New Yorker sold under 20,000 units. Not great showings for the three elements of the Chrysler lineup in 1960. That is, aside from the 300F, whose production figures totaled just about 1,200 units in 1960. By the time 1961 rolled around, Chrysler had changed its series names, and as opposed to being the Windsor, Saratoga, and New Yorker, the lineup went from Newport to Windsor to New Yorker. The 300 also incremented by one letter, as opposed to being the 300F, it was now the 300G. Sales, again, didn't really improve with the Newport selling under 50,000 units, the Windsor selling under 20,000 units, and the New Yorker again selling under about 20,000 units. The 300G sold about 1,600 units in 1961. The last year of the Astrodome was 1962, and again the series names were changed. Now the Windsor had been dropped from being the mid-level element of the lineup, and there was just the Newport, the regular 300, which was now the midline Chrysler, and then the range-topping New Yorker. The 300H letter car was the increment from the 300G. And again, sales were not that great, although the Newport sales did pick up versus the previous model year, now selling about 75,000 units in 1962. When the 1963 Chryslers were introduced, some of the Virgil Exner styling flair was toned down significantly, and the instrument cluster was also made much more conventional. No more three-dimensional astrodome with all of the gauges and speedometer housed within one pod. Now there would be separate individual round gauges across the instrument cluster. Again, far more conventional than what was found in the 1960-62 to 62 model years with the astrodome cluster. And really, while Chrysler interiors would remain tasteful for a number of years into the future, they really never quite reached as much as they did in this early 60s, late 50s time period when Chrysler put out not only daring exterior styling, but also quite daring interior styling and with interior fit and finish that was quite excellent for the time period. In any case, hope you enjoyed this discussion about Chrysler's 1960-62 to 62 Astrodome. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, take care. Thanks again for watching this video on Chrysler's 1960-62 to 62 Astrodome. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you, including the video on the 1961-63 to 63 Imperial Dash and Interior at bottom right. Thanks again for watching.